Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Spyderco Urban. Um, first off, a size comparison, just so you get a sense of what's going on here. This is a Spyderco Delica, which is a bit bigger than the Urban. This is a Spyderco Dragonfly, which is a bit smaller than the Urban. This is an Ontario Rat Number no. 2, which is, again, a little bit bigger. And, you know, in the same ballpark, this is a ZT0452CF, which is absolutely ridiculous. And it's basically the anti Spyderco Urban. Um, it is, yeah, just illegal in a lot, a lot of places. So, anyways, there's your size comparison. Uh, and, you know, what the heck, standard U.S. Petty, because that's what's on the table this time. Um, I want to thank my buddy Pete for sending this guy along. I very much appreciate it, and uh, it's been a, a pleasure to play with here. And then also, one thing to point out is that this is one of the uh, Spydercos that is actually made in Italy, which is interesting and different. So, uh, not an American-made one like the UK PK, which is funny that that's made in the US of anyways. But, um, yeah, so, Italian Spyderco. Let's go on ahead and do the usual. Let's jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular pocket knife. So on the good side, first off, it does have the reversible Spyderco clip, which is a beautiful thing, the wire clip here. Um, not only because this is a great clip, but also it's a very deep carry option. You can slide this into your pocket and just the very edge of the knife is popping over and it doesn't look super, super knifey. So I'm a big fan of that. That's a great choice and especially on this knife, which is really designed to be a discreet, legal sort of carry, I, I like that choice very much. Um, so that's nice. The ergonomics on this guy are really pretty damn good. Um, it fits nicely in the hand. It's wide enough. It, between this uh, finger choil down here and the thumb ramp, this locks nicely into the hand. Um, it's not Spyderco's greatest ergonomic work, in my personal opinion, but it is really pretty damn good. Uh, I got no real complaints ergonomically about using this guy, and I could use this all day long if I needed to. So that's nice. Um, this is uh, a, a slip joint knife, and I'll talk a little bit more about the action there later, but one nice thing that this has going for it relative to a lot of traditional slip joints is that it is disassemblable, and in fact, you've already seen the disassembly video. Um, but I like that very much because it makes it easier to maintain, it makes it easier to really use and not have to worry about it. Uh, so, and it's a very simple disassembly process. It's an honest pleasure to disassemble this knife. And so I like that very much. The blade on this guy is sort of a mega dragonfly blade. It's that leaf shaped sort of blade. Someplace it doesn't have the swedge like the dragonfly does, but um, you know, it's, it's a nice shape, honestly. Um, it's got a lot of good for it. It's a full flat grind. The blade stock is not too thick, although it is on the thicker side. I believe it's slightly thicker than on the Delica. And I'm not sure that's super necessary. But, you know, nonetheless, um, it's it's a nice blade. There's no real complaint there. Uh, the steel is N690, which is just fine. It's kind of in the same ballpark as your 154CM, your 440C, but not chemically, but just in terms of usage, no problem. Uh, and one thing I really do like about this is that the full flat grind on this just misses the spidey hole, which means you don't have that unpleasant little jump, uh, for instance, right here where the spidey hole, which is supposed to be round and smooth, hits the full flat grind. That's not something that's usually done super well, and so I appreciate that the, the hole and the flat grind line here uh, do not quite intersect. Uh, so that's good. Then finally, on the good side, the slip joint action on this is very, very nice. Um, it's got this finger choil, which means that it's not going to close on you, even though there is no lock on this knife. I'm not pressing anything, I'm not touching anything. Just a little bit of pressure will shut the knife, but the thing is, what you got your finger there, I can do a whole lot to this knife. I can really push on it, but it's not closing onto my finger because, well, the blade would have to compress my finger first. And that's a nice way to do a slip joint. It is a slip joint, but practically speaking, it's being held open. There's no real question that it's going to shut in your hand, or on your hand more specifically. So I like that a lot. The other thing to point out is that this is actually a slip joint knife you, which you can close with one hand pretty easily. You just need to get enough pressure past to pop it shut. And so this is a slip joint, which is still operable with just one hand, which I appreciate. Um, not that it needs to be a slip joint, except for legal reasons, but still, if they're going to do it, this is a good way to do it. So uh, there you go. That's your good. It's got the nice Spyderco wire clip. The ergonomics are very good. 
Um, it is disassemblable, even though it's a slip joint. It's got a really nice blade, and it's got a great slip joint action. Uh, Spydeco does their slip joints well. If you watch the disassembly, I'll sh kind of show you exactly how it works. And uh, there you go. Let's jump into the grate. The very best thing that this knife has going for it is that it is very, very legal. It is often the case that politicians will manufacture a, a terror, a crisis, because scared people are more easy to manipulate, and the divided populace is also more easy to manipulate. Um, and so you will come up with some sort of issue, some externality, which makes everybody terrified, whether it's immigration, whether it's weapons, whether it's anything like that. All they need to do is make you scared and then separate you, and then they've won. Um, and very often it's the case that you get that with knife laws. Um, a politician will decide, you know what, I need to get the soccer mom vote a little bit. And they're scared, so you know what, those locking automatic knives are just terrible. And so they'll put a law in the books that bans a locking knife or a knife with a blade over two and a half inches. There's no logic to it. Those blades are still out there. Criminals are still going to carry them. But it does make some people feel some warm fuzzies and makes those people vote for the politician who inspired the terror in the first place. It's a terrible fact of life, but it is a fact of life for some people. Whoops. <laughs> Rent slipped out there. Anyways, this is a great knife for dealing with those because it's good with short blade laws. The blade length here is three and a half inches, I'm sorry, three and a quarter inches of sharpened and a little bit more than three and a half inches, uh, wow, man, two and a half inches of overall length and two and a quarter inches sharpened. Not talking so well today, except when I'm ranting. Um, it's also non-locking because locking knives are often subject to fear-based lawmaking. Uh, it is not a gravity knife. You cannot flick it open uh, using anything like that. And this doesn't flick open really at all to start with. Um, and, you know, it's it's just, it's pretty inoffensive in the grand scheme of things. The blade shape doesn't look so murdery. It's just a good cutting tool. And that's the thing. It is a good cutting tool, even despite being legal, even despite being designed around laws that are designed to separate people and make them scared. And so that's a beautiful thing. If you're having to put up with that kind of thing in your local political world, at least you can still have a decent cutting tool. It is still a no-go, though, if one hand opening is permitted. I'm sorry, is prohibited, but, you know, there you go. So that's the very best part of this, is that this is a knife that is very, very legal and is still a very good functional cutting tool. Uh, and, you know, yeah. Anyways, stopping the rant now, let's go into the bad. So on the bad side, it's a little bit small in the hand, even for me. Um, it's not terrible, but I, I feel like I want a little bit something more right up in this region. And I imagine if you've got even bigger hands than I do, you're going to have an even less fun time with this. So, um, you know, that's the one area where the ergonomics let me down. It feels a little bit small. Um, but even though it is small, it's a little bit on the wide side. If you got this in your pocket, one of the disadvantages to the Spydeco leaf-shaped blade is you've got a whole lot of blades sticking up out of this. It's not supporting a whole lot of edge. And so, I, it's awfully wide there. It's not huge. It's not ridiculous. It's not the Spydeco Domino or anything, but it is a bit wide. And that's one of the reasons I like the Drop Point UKPK, which has kind of a, a cutout here, which means that the knife is a lot smaller in the pocket eventually. So uh, that's good. The blade stock on this guy is thicker than it really needs to be. Let's be real here. Why is this blade this thick? This is a slip joint. It's not a hard use cutting tool. Um, so I would have preferred that they use blade stock more along the lines of your Spydeco Dragonfly or your Delica, uh, rather than this thicker stuff. I don't get that in the least. Um, so there you go. And then the jimping isn't very comfortable because it's way over sharp. And actually, we'll get there in a second. But yeah, that's the bad. It's a bit small in the hand. It's a bit wide for being as small as it is um, because of the leaf-shaped blade here. The blade stock is really thicker than it needs to be. And the jimping on it isn't very comfortable. And that actually brings us right into the ugly. The ugly on this guy is that the edges all around are really sharp. Um, and these are not the, the blade edges, but the rest of it. Um, the spine of the blade is really unpleasantly sharp. The spidey hole is not much fun here. The jimping is way over sharp. I mean, the entire knife is kind of a finger reader. And that's just not stellar. Um, and it's something that Spyderco can often struggle with, but this Maniago factory is really having trouble. This is something you can fix with a uh, ceramic rod or a little bit of sandpaper on a pencil, but none Nonetheless, I kind of wish they'd done a little tiny bit of extra finishing here just to make this a little bit more comfortable to use on a regular basis. Again, you know, okay, if you're wearing gloves, that makes sense, but this is a light use sort of slip joint knife. So there you go. Uh, let's jump into the final verdict here. 
This knife is honestly a really great solution to a very particular set of legal problems, that is, laws made by scared people. And it's proof that you can get a really good knife even if you live in an area with bad restrictions, um, because it's a good functional cutting tool. I feel like 90% of the cutting tasks in my life could be accomplished with this knife, no problem. And I'd be seeing it for a couple of days, it was a bit big, but it was perfectly fine, it was functional, no issues whatsoever. Um, and so that's great, and that's one of the things that Sal Glesser is really great at, is providing a quality tool for everyday life that's still able to cope with really stupid laws. That's, he's really, really excellent with that. So I like that a lot. That said, another one of Sal's designs, the UKPK, appeals to me a little bit more because the blade is a little bit longer, but also it feels nicer in the hand, and if you get the drop point version, it's also slimmer in the pocket. So if I had a choice between this and the UKPK and legality didn't determine my choice, I'm going UKPK. But this is still really, really solid. The UKPK is a gem. This is just a really, really solid knife. It just doesn't make my heart sing in the same way that the Dragonfly or the Delica or the UKPK did. So I guess, yeah, that's my final conclusion. This is really solid. And if you got feel for politicians, I feel bad for you, son. You got 99 problems, but the Spyderco Urban isn't one of them. Hope this has been useful, and uh, I hope you don't need this knife. And I hope your politicians are better than that, but if you do, Sal's got you covered. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.